Hello everybody and welcome back to the channel. Today we're looking at China. China and Zambia are back in business. That's good news for the country. Not fit about Vipa Mabuga, China, a colonizer, and she's been at after independence. Me jealous, see if you have a video. So, this is the best move ever that they're back in business. So, just listen to what exactly Westlands, happened. Historically, with low interest rates and flexible terms, there must be over millions of different types of loans out there. But if you were to take an eagle's eye view of the different kinds of loans involving Chinese lenders, then you can broadly categorize them into three different types. The loans fall into three categories. Zero interest loans offered as aid, concessional loans which have a lower interest rate often intended for large infrastructure projects, and the most common, commercial loans with higher interest rates in line with what you would get from a typical private bank. One of the very interesting trends that we see when researchers discuss Chinese loans is that there is a tendency to bunch all three together. Well, the very first question you should ask yourself whenever you see something like that is, well, are they comparing apples to oranges? Because if you're comparing commercial loans to something available from the World Bank or one of its different agencies, then you're not really comparing like for like. And the fact of the matter is this, and I hope the borrowers out there are listening, 95%, if not 99%, of the loan agreement are there in favor of the lenders, no matter who you deal with. This is because by the time you sign that loan agreement and you get the money, you'll have the money in your hands, and the only thing the bank will have is a piece of paper. That is why the loan agreements are in their favor. In one report which analyzed 100 Chinese contracts, it revealed that the loans are structured to give an advantage over other creditors and allows action to be taken if the borrower acts contrary to the interests of a People's Republic of China entity. There are also unusual clauses that shroud agreements in secrecy. When you look at multilateral lenders like the World Bank and the different agencies, their shareholders are countries and they're required to publish their lending and activities just to be transparent. They don't have any choice. On the other hand, when you come to commercial banks, then you'll see a very different case. And that is, banks often are under a duty of confidentiality to their clients. I think the Chinese banks are no different. But the rush to give out loans by the Chinese has meant some of their early investments weren't as profitable as projected. So when China stepped into the field, it was much welcomed by the developing world that there would be increased financing for infrastructure. However, with the rush to get projects off the ground, to put them into action and to begin construction, critical due diligence was often left by the wayside. Financial sustainability, social and environmental sustainability assessments kind of never were done or were done haphazardly or were simply not transparent. Imagine that China sends an abuela on board, in Matipa Namanch. So just because of China, at least when we are not going to at least when we are Solution to the perfect in Chito is in regulation. The government should regulate properly as well as negotiate, negotiate for better terms and better deals. That's the only secret. The project is well executed if there is no corruption and well audited. So kudos for the Zambian government for bringing China back on, uh, back on track and back on board. Thank you for all the subscribers and see you in the next one. Bye.